Hello, I'm Jessica Mills and I'm here today with Paul Horvath from the firm Sports Lawyer and a member of the LIV Sports Law Committee. So Paul, can you tell me a bit about what role do the lawyers play in the AFL? Good afternoon Jessica. Well, there's a range of roles these days. Obviously there's legal roles both at the AFL itself, there's a number of lawyers there. There's lawyers engaged by clubs, both as in-house lawyers and also as administrative staff. So the CEO and the COO at St Kilda are both lawyers. Brendan Gale's a lawyer, he's at Richmond as the CEO and so on. And then separately outside that providing specifically legal roles, you've got uh, people such as myself who, I'm not full-time, but I am employed by Richmond Football Club to provide their AFL tribunal services and so on. Um, and so there's a whole range of part-time, full-time, etc. roles for lawyers. And I guess in any area of commerce, uh, and it's a very commercialised area these days, uh, the lawyers uh, are going to be not too far away. Okay, so it sounds like there are a lot of opportunities for lawyers who are interested in a career in sports law. Do you think the demand for specialised sports lawyers has grown? Absolutely. Uh, I think if you have a look at the uh, TV rights deals in both the AFL, the NRL, have a look at the growth in uh, netball and uh, the semi-professionalisation with the Trans-Tasman Netball League, uh, the women's cricketers who are now the highest paid women's athletes uh, in a team sport in the country uh, and so on. I could keep going but there's all of this increased levels of uh, professionalisation, increased sponsorship by people um, and so the pie is much bigger in terms of the sporting landscape. Okay, and what are some of the main issues for lawyers working in sports law? So I guess from the basic level you start a club, be it an AFL club uh, down to a small sporting club with one or two hundred members, you need a constitution then you're going to have to have some sort of disciplinary process so you might have to set up a tribunal. Uh, then you're going to have contracts of different types whether it's sponsorship contracts, uh, whether it's deals to secure grounds um, with your local council, so there's another contract. Then you're going to have uh, sp again sponsorship uh, with people at the grounds and, and sponsorship of the club and so on. So there's all of those. Uh, then as I say you've got your tribunal process, you've got selection uh, agreements and so on, uh, selection disputes um, and, uh, and the list goes on and you know you've got um, sometimes disputes such as defamation issues arise um, and just the general commercial issues that arise uh, in many areas of industry and commerce. Okay. And just finally, it's a big week for sport in Melbourne. Who is your tip for the AFL Grand Final? Well, I just think history says that uh, Hawthorne should start favourites. Um, anything can happen, absolutely. and so I'm happy to be proven wrong, but uh, I just think um, uh, they know how to do it on the uh, uh, Grand Final day, and so I think they're the best bet. Thanks for your time today, Paul. Pleasure. If members would like to become involved in our Sports Law Committee and to chat with Paul, please feel free to contact us here at the LIV.